Show starts in one minute. As everyone knows, rainbows usually have a treasure at the end. Let's follow this one and see if we can find the pot of gold. Your attention, please. All new hot shop electric in car heaters have been installed for your comfort and convenience. Warning, high voltage. For your own safety, do not attempt to repair all your wires. You get more out of life when you go out to a movie. I've taken some shots with the uh, Minolta 21 2.8 and the 200 3.5. Well, hello there. My name is Mark, and this is a video about focal opposites. The ultra wide Minolta Roker 21 millimeter f 2.8 and the Telephoto Roker 200 millimeter f 3.5. Now these lenses have been modded by SimMod4 video, so that explains the new form factor. Caps, rings, gears, and declicked aperture. Now the mounts are still native MD, so to adapt these babies to my S1H, I'm using the MD to L adapter. Now these are the third and fourth official Minolta lenses I've tested next to the 51.7 and 58 1.2. And I've, I've got a lot to say about these lenses in general, but I'll save that for a different video. This video is all about the 21 and 200. And let's start wide and work our way in. The Minolta Roker 21mm f2.8. A very reasonably priced ultra wide angle lens that's built for speed with an f-stop range between f2.8 and f16. The all metal and glass construction feels durable and having just coming from testing FDs makes those lenses feel like toys. Now built between 1972 and 1977, it uses a 12 element in nine group optical design with a minimum focusing distance of 0.25 meters. Now the 21 millimeter focal length is considered ultra wide on a full frame sensor. So what you get with this lens is a lot of things in your frame. It's for this reason that many people, including myself, find it particularly tricky to shoot with. Not only does it bring more into the frame, but it increases the sense of distance between objects in your frame. Objects in the immediate foreground can be exaggerated in relation to the background, which can make for some interesting compositions. Shooting with this lens is a great experience. It's fairly sharp wide open and does vignette pretty heavily in the corners before f8, where it vanishes completely. Now the colors with this lens are also quite charming and they seem to match really accurately between the Roker set I've been testing. Now there aren't a lot of ultra wide angle fast SLR lenses available on the market that don't cost an arm and a leg, but this lens is one of them. The Rokers in general are fairly reasonably priced, especially for the value they offer. They might be vintage lenses biggest secret. Mm -hmm. between us. Nobody's watching, so who cares? <laughs> now, switching over to the 200 millimeter gives you an immediate contrast to that ultra wide perspective of the 21. Now, 200s generally aren't that expensive online and when used appropriately can provide insane value. Now, much heavier than the 21, the 200 might be a bit heavy for some, but heavy lenses always give me a sense of confidence when using them. With an f-stop range between f3.5 to f22, it uses a six element in four group optical design. It also dates back to the same period as the 21, 1972 to 1977, and uses the same multi-coatings which help give both lenses a consistent look. The 200 does have a built-in lens hood, but with the ring installed, you can't really notice it, but uh, take that ring off. There, there it is, right there for you. Pop goes the weasel. Now being a telephoto lens, you're not going to get as close as the 21 millimeter for a close focus, which on this lens comes in just under 2.5 meters. 
What makes the 200 such a nice companion to the 21 is where the wide angle has the ability to capture all the picture elements in your composition, the telephoto is able to isolate parts of that scene and render the details in all their glory. Now, the drive-in sequence at the start of this video, I think, really demonstrates the diversity you can achieve with just two lenses, yin and yang. In this case, perfectly balanced. Now, the rest is really up to you. Now, keep in mind that they're old lenses, so they do suffer from the same kind of vintage lens faults that are starting to sound a bit like a broken record. Chromatic aberrations in high contrast compositions, not super sharp corner to corner wide open, vignetting, etc. All these elements I do feel like you can either avoid, minimize, or in some cases exploit, so I hate to state them blatantly as flaws. Now, my experience with these lenses is quickly making them a favorite of mine, and to top it off, in their current form, they make even better video lenses. So where my daughter rides is this wonderful old Ford sitting in a field. And I just got this magic carpet slider and I thought it might be a good place to test it out with these lenses. We didn't have a lot of time, but I'm really happy with the results, both the lenses rendered and how the slider performed in what was a 15 minute quick shoot during a small window in my daughter's lesson. Now what you're not hearing is the massive horse farts this guy was just dropping. Outrageous gaseous releases. I asked him if he had any oats lately and he kind of lifted up his tail and answered, a few. That was a little joke my dad taught me when I was a kid and it had me on the floor. Dad jokes are the best. A few. Anyway, back to the lenses. I'm loving these Minolta lenses and it's going to be very hard for me to give them back to Alan from Vintage Lens from Video when I'm done slowly, slowly working my way through them. The build quality is outstanding. Similar to the Takamars, only with these lenses, no radiation to worry about. Right now, they're still very competitively priced online, and I think everybody's looking at FDs right now. And after contact Zeiss and Leica R's, they might be earning a place in my top three. I am curious to know what you guys think based on the samples you've seen. Rokers, are they rock stars or what? That 21 almost needs to be compared directly to the contact Zeiss 21 because the contact one costs about $2,500 more. Why? It's a good lens, but but why? That might be why. Anyways, it has been a pleasure hanging out with you guys for the last little while, but I do need to wrap this up and figure out how I'm going to edit it. Always fun. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. So many lenses, so little time. Thank you.